his flesh and bone, crying out to you, Lord, I'm desperate. Love, come rattle this cage and set me free. All of my fears lie, Jericho walls gotta come down. In your flesh and bone, the words that have saved my soul is forgiven. Oh, now I can feel the darkness trembling. All of my fears lie. Jericho walls gotta come down, come down. All of my fears lie. Jericho walls gotta come down, come down. My prayers that turn to ruin. When your love moves in, all of my fears lie. Jericho walls gotta come down, come down, they're coming down. Let's see, let's lift this up together. Refill me from the ground up. Here we go. Refill me from the ground up. All I want is. Terrify the lies with truth. All of my fears lie. Good morning, Trinity Lutheran. Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm joined today by my beautiful mother, Beth. Good She's morning. also a member here at Trinity. It's a family affair doing the morning announcements with you. Um, Sarah had to take a break, but we're excited. I'm excited that my mom is here joining us this morning. Happy Sunday. Uh, we are excited to gather in this place this morning. We're going to continue to walk through our sermon series on the miracles of Jesus. Um, that is running through October 24th. Uh, again, it's a church-wide study. Miss Lori Hinman has more information to you or for you, um, whether you need a physical copy of the series or if you're joining us virtually, you want to do the study virtually, she has all the information that you could um, need and use for walking through the miracles of Jesus. Pastor Jay is going to be preaching for us today. He's going to be focusing on um, Jesus' miracles of physical healing. Um, that's the focus. Um, I can't wait to see what he has in store I for us. I can't either. What a, what a beautiful and wonderful thing for the church to walk through this morning. So we're yeah. really excited. Mm -hmm. Again, all those materials um, can be uh, reached and found uh, through Miss Lori Hinman. I'm going to turn it over to Mom for the first time. She's going to go over some outreach opportunities that are happening within the church. So the September um, food closet challenge is still going on. We still need diapers, wipes, uh, pull-ups, baby food, and dog and cat food. So there's just a little bit under a week left for that. If you can contribute in any way to the food closet, um, help us meet our challenge goals, we'd really appreciate it. And like she said, one week left to bring those items in. We're not categorizing children and pets, but we kind of are <laughs> um, for that last week for the food closet. Um, just a quick reminder as we talk about youth and family that the Sunday school uh, times have changed a little bit for our fall program. It's called Kid Zone. Um, there's a Sunday school uh, service, you could say, happening between our two services, so our 9 o'clock service and our 11 o'clock service. Um, it happens at 1015 to 1045. Again, that's Kid Zone Sunday School. Um, and that began uh, on September 19th. We didn't have a, a huge attendance, so we're always looking for more kids. Again, 1015 to 1045 on Sundays. And then we have our Kid Zone Light program um, during the sermon at the 11 o'clock service. Really quick before I forget, I also want to say that there's a QR code at the bottom of our screen right now. That's going to be your connection card. So take your phone, take a picture of it, scan it, and that'll take you to Trinity Joppa uh, website. And you can tell us that you're here. It's also our uh, place of giving. Um, 
And it's, again, it's just showing us that you are here virtually joining us uh, for our worship service. Speaking of joining virtually, uh, Sarah Garner is on YouTube right now, and she says hello. So good morning, Sarah. Hello, we miss Sarah. you. We do miss you. <laughs> but thank you so much for tuning in at home. And also, Jim and Arlene from Myrtle Beach, they're, um, they're pretty con uh, consistent with their watching uh, virtually. So hello, uh, Jim Wonderful. and Arlene. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Um, Going along with the youth and family, we've been talking about our Ravens tailgate party that's coming up next week, October 3rd. The Ravens are playing the Broncos. Um, I think it's a 4.30-ish game. It's in the afternoon. But uh, the youth is going to be there. We're going to watch the game. We're going to play yard games. During halftime, there's going to be a time of prayer, which I think is really special and really meaningful. And then once the game picks back up, uh, they'll have s'mores um, around a fire and, again, to watch the Ravens play. Um, the youth group is also having a trip to Maze Quest, which is on Friday, October 8th from 5 to 10.30 p.m. And it's for all youth uh, grades 6 through 12. Um, they're going to have um, games and food. They're going to have a bonfire. It's $15 a person. Um, and the permission slips are due soon to Dave Merritt by October 3rd. So if you want to go to Maze Quest, next. We, yeah, next week, get that in. Yeah, so that I remember doing that yeah. in middle school and it always being really fun. I remember fun, chaperoning so. for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that the um, uh, kids, youth, 6 through 12, they'll be able to sign up and go to that. Um, just a quick reminder, we're having our confirmation classes uh, for our 7th and 8th graders. It's happening right now. Um, so that already started. They meet on Wednesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, during the Crossfire Middle School uh, gathering. So just as a reminder, um, confirmation classes are happening now. We also have some groups. We've talked about groups for a while. I know that our um, Trips Up group is going to the New England area coming up soon. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Where is Trips Up going in 2022? Yeah, so there's a new trip being planned, and it's to the Museum of the Bible, which is in Washington, D.C. Um, it's not until February 24th of 2022, but we need to make the reservations for that. So the cost of the trip is $109. It includes bus transportation and tickets to the museum and dinner on the way home. So that's a sounds like a fun trip. Um, you need to RSVP to Barbara Gorton, um, and her email address can be provided on the website if you'd like to go to that. Absolutely, Museum of the Bible. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I've pretty never cool. been to that. Me either. Um, but if you haven't either and you want to, all the information can be found online. We have a bunch of different ministries here at Trinity. Um, we try to touch on them every single week, but with uh, all of the things that we have going on at church, we need volunteers to help. Um, so my mom stepped up today to do our pre-service announcements, so she counts as a volunteer. We have our worship team that is uh, practicing and rehearsing behind us so that the service runs smoothly. They're volunteers, but we're always looking for you um, to help us as well. So um, many volunteers to make it run. It takes an army. Um, if you are willing and able to help volunteer at any of our um, different ministries, please contact us at the church. Specifically right now, we're looking for Sunday school helpers so that we can make this kid zone transition and new time a little bit smoother. Um, and we're looking for Crossfire middle school youth uh, leaders. We need help leading our youth group. Um, Dave Merritt does a great job, but he can't do it all no, by himself. So if, if you have a heart to serve, especially that youth um, generation, please reach out uh, to us at the church um, and let us know that um, this is a service opportunity for you. Um, we have transitioned into fall. Right, and the fall Bible studies have started, but it's not too late to join. If you're interested in any of the Bible studies that you can see online, um, you are always welcome. Please just send a shout out and we'll get you involved in those. I know that uh, the Bible study that we lead at, or I lead at my house, is starting um, in two weeks. Yeah. And so that's a good opportunity. If you want more information, you can contact me. But it, the lady that is in charge of all of our groups and all of our Bible studies and the sermon series is Miss Lori, and you can reach out to her. Her contact information is online. Um, on October 16th, the women's tea is coming up. There are still tickets available for that. They are $30 a person. Um, and you can register by calling Mickey Barkaloo um, at DisneyMouse56 at Comcast.net if you still like tickets to the women's tea. It's my favorite email address. <laughs> it <laughs> is <laughs> a great email address. And that's October 16th at 12 o'clock. And again, the coverage for the, the price for these things is just, it includes a lot. 
So obviously for the women's tea, um, we're including the price of the tea and the materials and maybe the craft or whatever you all do with the women's tea. We're, we've been part of the women's group. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's a great it's a lot group of to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And then again, back to the Trips Up group, there is a cost for it, but it's a package deal. It's a bundle of all of the things that's going to make the trip um, special and impactful. Right. Um, and pretty, co pretty um, cost low effective cost. for you. I think yeah. it's a low cost, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Sunday, October 10th, uh, so that's not this next Sunday, but the Sunday after, we will have our new member class that's going to be happening right after church um, from 12.30 to 2.30. It includes lunch and then discussion with fellow new members um, and then some of the members that have been here for a while um, uh, to, to discuss, you know, what it's like here at Trinity. We hope that this gives you a little bit of a preview of what we do as far as ministry and as far as worship, um, but we would like to invite you to our new member class if you're interested on Sunday, October 10th. We have um, a grief support program that began. Let's see, begins, what's today? September begins, 27th yeah. is tomorrow. Um, so it begins September 27th, um, and that is for the folks out there who uh, feel or who have lost a loved one and they're struggling with that, they're having a hard time with that. That's okay. Um, this group is going to be for you. It, it's going to be held Mondays, so again, uh, the 27th uh, from 9 30 to 11 30 a.m. You can email Tom Reed. His uh, email is on the website if you need to contact him. But we want to let you know that no matter what you're going through, we're going to support your struggles. Um, we are here for you as a, as a church family. Um, and so that's going to be the grief support program beginning on September 27th. I would probably get in a lot of trouble if I didn't mention the hashtag for Sarah. Um, Sarah's <laughs> in charge of our social media here at Trinity. Um, again, she's watching from home. So hi, Sarah. Um, if you are using or if you're talking about Trinity, or you're posting about Trinity, your great worship experience, we know that social media is big these days, um, please use the hashtag together at Trinity. And that's just the way it funnels all these posts down into one place so that we can see the experiences and the memories that you're making here at Trin Trinity as you walk alongside us, your church family, and then with the Lord. Um, so if you are posting on social media, that's awesome. We encourage you to do so. We encourage you to follow our social media. I love media. seeing the posts such a vibrant community we have here. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, Instagram we have a TikTok that's out there. <laughs> we have many different platforms that uh, Ken and Sarah and the team are working. Um, they're working on, so hashtag together at Trinity. Ryan Iwanowski says, hello from the tech booth, right over there. <laughs> I'm speaking of over there, as you can see behind us, it's a little rough. There's some patches, there's some paint. <laughs> But we're working on a <laughs> We're working on a new a media studio. So again, the development here is just on its way up. As we um, are working hard, the church staff yeah. is working hard to create new things and new technologies and so new exciting. ways to reach you. Um, we are here in the building. Obviously, it sounds like it's quiet down below, which means we're just getting ready to get started. Um, again, the miracles of Jesus is what Pastor Jay is going to talk about. Um, I think that again. I think that's a great. Parts of my favorite parts of the Bible. I love the healings of Jesus. Yeah. And again, today is going to focus on physical healing. But we thank you so much for joining us um, for this live stream. We know that takes a few extra minutes um, for you to watch before the service starts, but we appreciate it. The, the ministry teams are prepared and they're ready to go. It's a beautiful Sunday it outside. Is. Happy Sunday. Um, here at the church. Um, so we just are, are saying hello. To all of you at home, um, all of you watching virtually, I know that the times are different, times are changing, but if you feel comfortable and you feel led to come back um, in person, uh, whether you're wearing a mask or you want to sit socially distanced or if yeah, you don't, you want to sit everything. in the, yeah, yeah, you can sit in the back. We are just here to welcome you. And so we thank you for those uh, who are joining online today. We're excited to worship. Um, so many opportunities are offered at our church and we want you yeah, to be a part of them. Um, we, we have Stevens Ministers. If you need pastoral care, you can reach out to Pastor Jay or Reese Turner. Um, if there's prayer concerns, you'd like to have someone put on a prayer list, there's a prayer hub, all kinds of things going on. And Jeanette Harrington saying hi on Facebook. You're our first Facebook <laughs> shout out today. Hi, so Jeanette. <laughs> thank you so Happy much Sunday. for joining us. Um, folks, it's been great to, to talk with you. Yeah. Mom, thanks for stepping thanks in. Thanks for having me. It's <laughs> been a lot of fun. <laughs> She's done a wonderful job. Um, and we just are um, happy that it's Sunday. It's beautiful outside. God has given us a new day to worship. So thank God you for choosing good. Trinity Lutheran in Joppa.
everyone. Welcome to worship and a special welcome to all of our visitors today. It is so good to see all of you in worship and a special welcome to all of those joining us online as well. I'm going to invite you to please stand as you're able as we join together in worshiping the Lord this morning as we sing our opening song, Freedom. Yeah. 
said earlier, it is uh, awesome to be in the house of the Lord with you, especially to all of our guests that are here today. A very special welcome to each of you. Those of you who are watching us online, you found us at Trinity Jaffa. We're at 1100 Philadelphia Road. If you're local or in the area and have the opportunity to, please come and join us. We would love to see you. Um, speaking of which, if you will do us a favor, those of you who are in person and got a physical connection slip, that's that little rectangular piece of paper in your bulletin, if you could do us a favor and fill that out uh, with as much information as you are uh, able to give and uh, any prayer requests or anything that you want to share on the back of that and then hand that into the basket as you make your way forward later in the service to receive communion. Um, that's a great way for us to stay in touch with you, keep uh, connected, and so we really appreciate that. If you're watching us online, you can do the same just without a physical card. It's right on the front of our homepage, so you can fill that out and send that in, and we get to read all of those. Um, so welcome. Again, we are on the second week this week of our sermon series about the miracles of Jesus. So Pastor Jay will be leading us in the miracles of healing. So we are excited for that as we walk through these miracles, and we're reminded just of the power of, of God and um, his care for each and every one of us. 
And uh, it's also a special day today because we get to celebrate not one, but both of our sacraments here in the Lutheran Church. We have our first Holy Communicants. We want to say how proud we are of them. So we want to welcome them and their families as they take their first Holy Communion this morning. And then we also are celebrating a baptism this morning as well, I understand. So we are looking forward to that. Um, just a couple of real quick announcements. If you've been worshiping with us for any amount of time and have not quite taken that next step or you're interested in what it means to really be a more connected part of this faith community, um, we are having a class, a connection class on October 10th, so that's 1010, uh, right after this service, after the 11 o'clock service at around 12 o'clock, and we'll have lunch available. We'll have a about a two-hour um, class that we're going to have, Pastor Jay and I. It's a great time to get to know us a little bit more, for us to get to know you a little bit more, and kind of learn about, you know, what we do here, why we do it at Trinity, and it will be a good time. So if you're interested in that at all, please see Pastor Jay or myself uh, after the service here or drop us an email. And then also, uh, we have a grief share program uh, that uh, we've been doing, but we're starting off the next series of that uh, tomorrow, I believe, actually, or this week. And so if you're interested in that, Tom Reed is right there in the back. You can see him afterward. And we actually have a brief video to show with that. And as we're showing that video, I'm going to invite our baptismal family to come forward uh, while this video is playing. Hello, I'm Melissa Ressler, and I'm a member here at Trinity Church. And I'd like to share with you today a little bit about the grief support program that they offer. Several months ago, I was approached to join this group because my mother had passed away at the end of November. I thought to myself, do I really need this group? Do I really want to be in a room sharing my feelings about my mom passing away? At the last moment, I decided, why not? I'll give it a try. And I'm so thankful that I did. Joining that group didn't change the fact that my mother passed away. Nobody could change that fact. But what that group offered me was a safe place to share my feelings and my emotions and to make me feel like I wasn't going crazy. So I was so thankful to join this group and have someone to walk alongside me as I went through the grieving process. So I'd like to encourage any of you that have lost a loved one in the past or maybe presently going through losing a loved one to participate in this awesome program. If you need help with the, your grief journey, please contact us at 410-679-4000, extension 129, or you are welcome to come to the grief support program that starts on September the 27th, Monday at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, and if we can be of any service to you, please give us a call. Take care and God bless. So our grief share program is a pretty uh, good thing if you're able to walk through that, uh, we'd encourage you to do so. But we're going to do a little transition. Look at the cheeks on this little one. Oh my gosh. Y'all, this is Riley. Riley Grace Hicks. And we're going to baptize you, right? Yes. Is that good? She looks at me like my kids do. Hmm? Okay. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. And we're honored to be a part of this with you, my dear. Um, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in grace and love of God. You desire to have Riley baptized into Christ. If so, please respond. We do. Okay, good. <laughs> um, as you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with certain responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and do just work for justice and peace. So as parents, do you promise to help her grow in her Christian faith and life? If so, we do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture her in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, we do. All right, people, your turn. Uh, people of God, do you promise to support Riley and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, we do. Good. You get a lot of help to do this. Isn't that awesome? So I'm going to ask you a few questions just to uh, profess your faith and uh, confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, I renounce them. Renounce. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, I renounce them. Renounce. And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, I renounce them. Renounce. All right, I'm going to ask you all to stand. 
Because together as a community of faith, we're going to profess what we're going to do. All right? All right. Folks, you believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Father. Everything's on the screens for you. Make room of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to say a few words and then we'll get you wet. <laughs> we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are here washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You folks may be seated. And you may come forward a little closer. All right. You want to play? Yeah, you can play. Can we turn this down a little bit? But here, here, put your finger in there. Whoa. What do you think? All right. Now let's get your head wet. Riley Grace Hicks. That's fine. She's good. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Hello there. <laughs> and of the Son. I know. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, and, uh, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Riley with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Come back here. I got something else for you. Riley Grace Hicks, child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Okay. All right. How you feel? Feel different? Yeah? We're going to ask Mr. Ben to come up. We've got a candle that, we're gonna, that you'll be able to celebrate every September 26th. You can light your candle in memory of that. Or they can light it until you're able enough to play with fire. <laughs> but here we go, Ben. So as we present this candle to you, we're reminded of the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither does somebody light a lamp and place it under a bowl. Instead, they place it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. All right. Very good. I'm going to invite you to stand as we're going to give her a big old hello there. Hi. Yay. And Riley, this is where we get to welcome you as a community. So together, let us welcome Riley into the family. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. All right. All done. Thank you very much. We do have a couple other little things for you that I'll have Ben kind of hand to you. This is hers. You can blow it out. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Folks, the peace of the Lord be with you always. We're going to wave the peace to one another. Find someone you don't know. There's a whole bunch of them on this side over here. Wave to all of them because they're here to celebrate Riley. Thanks. You got it. Thank you. Um, I should be okay. Thanks. Well, before you sit down, ah, gotcha. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and just say a word of prayer. 
So you guys are welcome to stand or sit. It's all good. God knows where your heart is. Gracious God, thank you for this time we get to spend together. We give you thanks for the gift of baptism. As we get to enter uh, into this relationship with you, we give thanks for that grace and the forgiveness that comes along with that. But as we hear your word, we ask that you open your heart, our hearts to what it is that you need us to, to be a part of. We ask that our ears open to hear what it is you need us to hear and put our feet into action for what it is you need us to do. Your servants are listening. Speak, Lord, to our souls. Amen. All right, so if you're still up, please be seated. Send the kids. We got the word, send the kids. So if you have a little one that you'd like to, we just, we're gonna do a short little Sunday school kind of piece with them. They are welcome to go join. Mr. Merritt is back there with hopefully enough help. It's a lot of munchkins here. All right, we'll see you shortly. So you're gonna to have to adjust it again, BA. In 1995, on a, a PBS program, there was a scientist that gave the following definition of a miracle. He said, a miracle is nothing more than a natural law not discovered. Nothing more than a natural law not discovered. Y'all, that's exciting. There's like 40 kids walking that way to go celebrate God. That's awesome. Anyway, so this, obviously, this gentleman doesn't believe in miracles. He, he thinks everything can be explained scientifically. Now, of course, this is an attitude that denies the very existence of intervention in our world by God. And more likely, it explains that this man as well denies the existence of God. And so that's a prevailing thought right now that is out there in this world. But what do you think about when you hear the word miracle? It's one of those words in our language, a lot like love or hate, tends to get overused, doesn't it? Oh, I found my keys. What a miracle, right? Or it's a miracle my car started this morning. Sometimes that is, but it's a miracle this, it's a miracle that. And in many ways, I think we've diluted what a miracle truly is. And so we're going to kind of talk about that today. Uh, we've watered down this word in everyday use. And so we really want to kind of recapture what we're going to talk about. So the next few weeks, as we continue to walk through what a miracle is, we're going to look at it in terms of what the first century might have defined it as or what the ancient world would have defined it as. Uh, but if you've been part of a miracle or you've witnessed a miracle or you've prayed for a miracle, then you understand a little bit more about the power of miracles and how they are so true and they can only be explained beyond the natural world as it allows of course, the non-believing world is still going to struggle with miracles. Uh, there was a gentleman named Ron Nash. He was a professor at Reformed Theological Seminary. He was speaking to a group of Russian scientists who'd been taught all of their lives that there's no such thing as miracles. They're scientists, right? Can't, can't do both. So he put two cardboard boxes in front of them. And he said, the first one is what their worldview is. He said, this is your worldview. You believe that the world is closed. This is the natural world. This is it. This is all there is in this package. So that one was closed. The second box was open. Again, represents the material world. But he said, this is the Christian view. We believe in that world as well, but we believe the world is not closed, that God can still come in and intervene. And that works with Amazon boxes, Target boxes, Walmart boxes. I got them all at home if you need them. If you hang around people long enough, you're going to hear someone somewhere talk about something that happened to them that could have been a miracle, right? Whether they were part of it or not, the story of something that was unexplainable leaves an impact on people. Folks, even the way we are created are miracles, right? Think about the healing properties that our bodies have. You scratch yourself. It heals, right? You pull a muscle, it heals. Our bodies are created to heal themselves. Two and a half weeks ago, playing octopus tag with the youth group. Tripped, rolled, tried to roll, landed on my shoulder, broke my collarbone in three places, right? 18 days later, it's healing very nicely. Still sore, 
but it's still healing. Is that a miracle? I didn't heal it, but I am healing it. And folks, just so you know, I know it's not a contest, but my body has been healing throughout <laughs> its, its lifespan. I have broken my arms four times. I have plates in my arms. I have a pin in my jaw from when it was broken. I'm probably one metal piece away from being a cyborg. But broken feet, dislocated elbows, broken teeth, whatever it is, it's been a good life <laughs> and challenging. But I don't share that with you because I want pity or sympathy or empathy. I share it with you only from the standpoint that I can testify to how our bodies can heal. We're created to be healed. We're created to continue to go in with life. But that healing only comes through God. Our bodies are a testimony to that creative and healing power of God. So I do see it as a miracle that my body or our bodies are designed to heal. But that's not the kind of miracle we want to talk about today. We're going to continue through our journey of some of these miracles of Jesus. And so I want us to all be on the same page when it comes to what we're talking about when it comes to miracles. You may have heard it said that English doesn't necessarily capture the true spectrum of a thought or an idea. Uh, if you've studied words like I do, I'm an English major, love it. Greek words are phenomenal, all right? Even though we had to learn them in seminary, they're still, they hold this great meaning behind them. So they always have different layers and uh, different words that will explain something that we tend to call one word. So here's a combination of three words or so uh, that will be a definition for miracle as we're going to use them throughout the next few weeks uh, as they would have defined them 2,000 years ago. So we're going to look at the words, uh, uh, three words of the following. They're going to be used in sync with one another. Dunamis is the first word. Dunamis. It is an act of a supernatural being. All right. The word dunamis has this idea of a supernatural power. It speaks primarily of the agent of the act or the power that can be delegated to human agents. For instance, in Acts, here's where we see an example of it. In Acts 1, verse 8, Jesus is speaking. Acts, Old Testament or New Testament? New. Okay, very good. All right. There's more to go. Let's come. In Acts 1, 8, we hear Jesus say, But you will receive power, which is that word dunamis, with the, when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. All right? So we're talking about power, a supernatural power that's delegated to a human agent. So a lot of questions will come out. Where did Jesus get the power to do these miracles? Was it a divine or supernatural power? Or was it his own power? And the actual Lutheran answer is yes. <laughs> Not in the four. It is yes. It came from Jesus. It came from that supernatural power that he had. So the idea is the word dunamis is that there's a supernatural power involved. Another word that is used in conjunction with that is Teresa. It speaks of the effect a miracle has an unusual effect, you would say, right? It speaks of the wonderment of the event, signs and wonders. And this one is actually almost used exactly, Teresa is used quite commonly with the word simeon, right? Simeon. The Greek word simeon means sign, a sign of miracles and wonders by which God authenticates the men sent by him or by which the men uh, prove that the cause that they are pleading is God's cause, all right? Basically, it shows forth the glory of God. Simeon means sign that shows forth the glory of God. So a miracle is a significant event. It has purpose. Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke um, use uh, these first two words quite a bit more. But John likes to use this word. The Gospel of John likes to use this word Simeon so much. In John 2, verse 11, one of the first examples we hear of this. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs, that's Simeon, which he revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. That was that example of turning water into wine, which we'll get to. And then in John 20, verse 30, the very last thing we hear in the, in the Gospel of John, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. So those three words we're going to use together to define what a miracle is. So the definition of a miracle, as we're going to use these, is an unusual and significant event which requires the working of a supernatural agent and is performed for the purpose of authenticating the message or the messenger. Clear as mud? All right, that's as technical as we're getting today. Throughout the next few weeks, though, we're going to continue to learn about the signs that Jesus performed. We're going to see how they're significant events, as we're defining them, that show forth the glory of God. And they authenticate or they affirm that Jesus is the Son of God. 
because the power that was with him and in him to perform those signs showed, right? Uh, Last week, if you were with us, if you weren't, that's okay, but we heard Randy Gass. He was our head of school. He spoke about this first sign that Jesus performed, this first miracle that Jesus performed when he turned water into wine. The first way that the people experienced the power of Jesus and this sign was through that miracle, and it was a miracle of provision, all right? Randy spoke to that provision, the abundance that God has given us and the given Trinity in the school, starting with so very little, at times that were so uncertain, and yet allowing God to do his thing. It's so very pivotal, and it reminded us over and over again that God is faithful. And so Jesus turns water into wine, but not just any amount. It's an abundant amount, as we heard, right? Then he also talked a little bit about the feeding of the 5,000, which was probably a lot more than that. They only counted the men back in those days. So it could have been upwards of 7, 10, 15,000 people total. But he fed them with two fish and five loaves of bread. And there was abundance left over. So this abundance is not just to provide needs for the people at the time, but quite simply to lift up the glory of God, to show who is God and who is not. Jesus is sent from God, and he did these signs, these miracles, showing who God is through him. And so he is to be glorified, because no one can do those things outside of an all-knowing, all-loving, all-providing God. All right? So as we walk through these next few weeks, and we look and we reflect on the miracles that Jesus is doing, I want us to first and foremost answer the question in our head. Have this one imprinted in there right at the top of your Bible if you need to, wherever we do it. How is God glorified through this miracle? How is God glorified through the miracle? If I haven't answered that by the end of the the message, come and see me because that wasn't very clear then. But hopefully you'll see how God is glorified and reflected in these miracles. But even the miracles that we experience today, the whole point of these events is to show God's power and authority over it all. It's God's glory that is shown through it all, so that we will have no doubt that God is God. So this morning, we're going to look at two additional miracles that Jesus did. We're going to look at the healing of the ten lepers, and we're going to look at the faith of a woman who simply reached out and touched Jesus' cloak so that she could be healed. That one's awesome. We're going to look at miracles of healing and physical Physical healing tends to be the one that we do think about the most because it tends to be the one we think about the most because we live in a world of brokenness. When a friend or a loved one is in the hospital, what do we do? We lift up prayers for healing. We lift up prayers for a miracle in some cases. Um, When we lift up prayers from the altar, we do it because they're friends and family and members of the church. And we're praying for them, sometimes for comfort, but most of the time it's for some form of healing in their life, actual physical healing in their life. We'll pray for healing of cancer, brokenness, healing of mental illness. Today, we're going to add Vern Lutz to the prayers, Cindy's husband. He fell off a roof on Thursday. His head CT was fine, but he had internal bleeding. They intentionally put him into a coma because they had to take out parts of his colon. He was in a mess. But this morning... He's off the ventilator and he's talking, right? Is that a miracle? We know it's happening. But we prayed for that healing first and foremost. That was the first thing that came out of anyone's mouth. How can we pray? What do we need to pray for? And we prayed for a miracle that he's going to to be, be okay, quite frankly. He's got a long road, but he'll be okay. But that's what we do. We lift prayers to God for healing because we know we have examples of miracles that have happened. And we know that God can do miracles and do all these things. Uh, For the last year and a half, we've lifted prayers for COVID. Folks who are wrestling with that. Folks who are on ventilators. It continues to be pervasive. And so we ask for miracles to continue to be worked out for so many of folks. And we've seen the power work for many. And for some, it hasn't worked. But we need to understand that God is still God and in control. So before we dive into that, I want to tell you about Tess. It's, I don't get to tell this story very often, but it's one of my favorites. Um, Tess was a preco- precocious little eight-year-old girl, right? One day, she heard her mom and her dad talking. They were in a serious, kind of somber tone, talking about her little brother, Andrew. 
Well, Tess didn't understand everything that, was, that they were saying, but she understood the gist of it. Her little brother, Andrew, was very, very sick. They were completely out of money. They were going to have to move out of their house and move into a small apartment because mom and dad didn't have enough money for the doctor bills and a mortgage payment. On top of that, it was a very expensive surgery that needed to happen for Andrew, and they couldn't find anyone to do it, to lend them the money. So after a little while, Tess heard her dad say to her tearful mother in this desperation voice, only a miracle can save Andrew now. So Tess ran to her room. She pulled out a glass jar from under her bed. She poured out all the change onto the bed. She counted it carefully. Then she put the change back in the jar. She put the jar under her arm and she ran outside and slipped out the back door and ran down to the drugstore about six blocks away. The pharmacist was there talking to a man very intently. And at first he didn't notice Tess was standing there. So she waited patiently. And then after a little while, she dramatically cleared her throat. <clears throat> but still no luck. The pharmacist did not see her. Finally, Tess got her, her, his attention. She opened the jar, took out a quarter out of her jar, and started tapping it on the counter, right? That did it. The pharmacist turned around and said, Just a minute, dear. I'm talking to my brother from Chicago, whom I haven't seen in ages. Tess, being eight, Well, I want to talk about my brother, right? He's really, really sick, and I want to buy a miracle. His name is Andrew. And he has something growing inside of his head. And my daddy says that only a miracle is going to save him now. So I need to know how much does a miracle cost? I have the money right here and I'm going to pay for it. This is all I have saved. If it isn't enough, I will get the rest. Just tell me how much a miracle costs. The pharmacist's brother, standing there, very well dressed. But he stooped down and he asked Tess. He said, what kind of miracle does your brother need? I don't know, Tess replied as her eyes kind of welled up a little bit. She goes, I just know he's really sick, and mommy says he needs an operation. But my parents can't pay for it, so I want to use my money. Well, how much do you have? The man asked her. One dollar and eleven cents, Tess said very proudly. One dollar, it's all I have, is that I can get more if I need to, but that's what I have. Well, you're in luck, the man said with a smile. One dollar and eleven cents is the exact price of a miracle for one little brother. Right? So he took the money in the one hand, and with the other hand, he took Tess. And he said, take me to where you live. I want to see your brother, and I want to meet your parents. Let's see if I have that kind of miracle that you need. Now, what she didn't know, what no one knew, was that well-dressed man from Chicago was Carlton Armstrong. He's a doctor, might have heard him out, very well-known neurosurgeon. So the operation was completed, completely without charge. And it wasn't long until Andrew was home again, doing well. And Tessa's mom and dad were so grateful. And the story could end there, but this is the great tearjerker part. Um, later, they were talking one night about the chain of events that happened um, in that life that really helped save Andrew. And that surgery, her mom said, was a real miracle. And then she said, I just wonder how much that miracle would have cost us. And Tess smiled, right? She knew exactly how much. One dollar and 11 cents is how much that cost, plus the skill and the graciousness of a doctor. But is that coincidence or is it a miracle? Was it coincidence that the doctor was in town at that exact time? Or was God doing his thing and putting the pieces together? Well, of course, we might say God. I would hope we'd say God. And if you do say God, then what happens at that point? Who gets the glory? God gets the glory. Because a coincidence doesn't get any glory. All right. Let's look at Mark 5. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark. Old Testament or New Testament? Very good. New. There's a little bit about chapter 5 that we need to do to set this up. Uh, chapter 5 actually begins with a miracle of Jesus' power over evil, which we're not going to talk about today, but we will in two weeks. Uh, Jesus is on his way uh, to the town where he's heading, right? So he does that miracle, and then he's on his way to the synagogue when a new, another leader of the synagogue comes up, and his name is Jairus. And Jairus stops him and asks him to see his daughter who is dying. And so this is where the story is picking up, because it starts at one, and then it picks up, and then it goes at the end. So verse 24 is where we hear, so he went with him. He being Jairus, went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, being Jesus. 
And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. She had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. But at once, Jesus realized the power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and he asked, who touched my clothes? Well, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? They couldn't believe it. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So let's ask that question. How is God's glory shown through this sign? Well, let's take a larger view of the miracle. A recap. She had this disease. She had a condition. 12 years of nonstop bleeding. She was tired. She was exhausted. Those 12 years alone probably would have created great difficulty physically for her. But her physical condition then contributed to every other aspect of these factors she was walking through. She would have suffered socially as well, being an outcast. In that day, she was considered unclean. So she would have had very little, if any, contact with other people. She would have lived a life of isolation as a social outcast. She also would have suffered financially, as we heard, spending her life's fortune or savings in hopes of being healed. Her disease literally had brought her to financial ruin. All of this, no doubt, led to emotional suffering as well. Most of us can't even think about dealing with this kind of adversary for this kind of time. I'm sure there's times where she wanted to give up and felt that she was never going to be healed. But she was desperate. She'd suffered many things. She'd spent all she had, and she was not getting any better. As a matter of fact, she was growing worse. So things had not improved for her. The longer she continued in this situation, the worse it was going to get. And since she tried everything, she was desperate. Desperate for healing. She tried it all on her own, and she was left with nothing. And along comes Jesus. What does she desire above all else? Healing. She genuinely desired healing, which we heard in verse 28. She thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. But we hear that Jesus is on his way to the home of Jairus, going to heal his daughter, potentially. It would have been easy for uh, her to be discouraged by the crowds. Jesus was a rock star. Crowds were all around him. So she would have had a hard time and a difficulty getting to him. But she was determined to get to the Lord. She pressed through the crowd. She kept her eyes fixed on Jesus. She had to overcome the obstacles before her if she wanted to get to the Lord. She had a faith, and she used it. Of course, she'd known great disappointment before. Twelve years prior had been empty promises and no healing. But somehow this was different. Somehow Jesus wasn't like the rest. So she was confident that if she could just get close enough, she'd be made whole again. Now, there's a lot more we can take away from this encounter with Jesus. But above all else, we have to know that an encounter with Jesus changes us. It changed her. Not just physically, but it then allowed her to be healed throughout the rest of her life's journey. So an encounter with Jesus is a life changer. Here's another passage, a little shorter, but it's in Luke. Old Testament or New Testament? New. All right. Luke 17. If you have that open, flip to Luke chapter 17. Jesus, again, is traveling. He did a lot of traveling. Uh, as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. They called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleaned? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. 
Again, similar scenario, right? Ten men, we don't know how long they've been afflicted with leprosy, but we do know they had that disease. But the same as the woman, they would have been outcasts, living in the shadows, or actually literally living outside the city gates in a colony of other unclean people like them. And along comes Jesus. They would have had to risk it all to actually go and talk to him. Because they weren't allowed in the walls of the city since they were so unclean. They were quarantined from society. And you could tell they understood their isolation too. Because we heard them say they stood at a distance and they called in a loud voice. Or basically they yelled at Jesus, have pity on us. They were at a point too. They had nothing to lose. They had lost everything. Their friends, their family, their societal relationships. They were loners. Now, these are both examples of miracles, probably extreme examples, but we can learn a lot from these two stories. First, we learn there is nothing that Jesus can't bring us through. There is nothing that is keeping us from living a life that is whole. Nothing can stop us that maybe is pushing us away from our friends and our family, that's keeping us at a distance from one another. Nothing is too much. Maybe you think it's too much, but it's not. Maybe you feel the pain or the situation you're walking through. Maybe it feels so pervasive, there's no way of getting out of it. Maybe you feel you deserve whatever it is that has happened to you or affecting you. Maybe your guilt's getting to be too much. You've tried everything else. And all you're left with is a miracle. But just like the story, along comes Jesus. All you are left with is reaching out to Jesus. All you are left with is a faith in the one who you know can change your life, but it's hard to admit it and open it up and be vulnerable and turn your situation over to him. Why is that? Because sometimes we get so comfortable with the pain of living with it that we're okay. Sometimes we get so comfortable with what hurts us that we just say, It is what it is. But an encounter with Jesus changes that. Change is only going to happen when the pain of remaining the same outweighs the pain of change. And when that time comes, because it will come, when that time comes that you've been living with the same pain, two years, 12 years, 24 years, whatever, all your life, when you turn it over to Jesus, it changes. Now, it may not always take away the pain. God's will is still in play. But our approach to the situation changes. But regardless, we're not going to move forward through anywhere if we're not able to move our feet to begin with, to accept it, to deal with the change. And when that change happens for us, then and there are we prepared to give God the glory. Even in the middle of the pain and suffering, are we willing to lift our hands up to God, (laughs) almost, and say, thank you. I believe in you amid all that is going on in my life. Thank you. I don't like what's going on, but I know you're here and a part of that with me. I know you are still in control. You're still full of abundant grace. You're still full of mercy, and I want your will to be done. And I want your glory to be shown through my life. And I have faith that you can change me. If you had that conversation with God, think about the faith that it would take to turn 12 years of Bleeding over to someone you didn't know, but you heard about, and you thought, what, what could it hurt? Think about the faith that it took to go where you're not allowed to go, to take a chance on a guy that might be able to help you. What kind of vulnerability do you have to have to lay it all out to Jesus? Because that's what we're talking about. Our own vulnerability to open up our hearts to Jesus and say, take it. It's not an approach that the world wants us to have. They want us to lead from power. They want us to control our own lives. But an encounter with Jesus, when Jesus comes alongside, he allows us to see that he is the one with the power. And when we only have faith, which is all we need, things will change. Because you heard that in both miracle stories, right? You heard that? In the first, Jesus says, daughter, your faith has healed you. 
Go and be pre- go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And with the leper that came back to thank Jesus for Jesus, what did we hear? Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Friends, faith works. Faith supersedes it all. It begins with faith. It's not miracles that generate faith. It's faith that generates the miracles. And when we take that posture of faith, we begin to look at how God gets the glory, however it turns out. So at this time, we're going to continue our worship. Now, usually end in prayer. But this time, we're going to open in a prayer. It will be a prayer, but we're going to do it as a prayer confession. Um, I will ask Ryan to to come on up and the rest of the team, too. Um, If you would please stand as you are able. I want to encourage you today to ask God in faith to work in your own life. We know God is a God of abundance. He's a God of grace. He's a God of forgiveness and love. He's a God who sent his son as a way for us to be made right to him. So I encourage us all today to lay ourselves before God and to pray. Encouraged by the promise of a healing Savior, help us to better see whatever we turn over to you that our life will be better for it. We may still continue to walk through our life with our own problems, but we know that we will never walk alone. God, if your will is for us to receive healing for whatever it is that afflicts us, help us to have the bold assurance to go and proclaim it as a miracle in our own life so that you can receive the glory. So on the screens, it will be a confession. I encourage them to confess along. Because God calls us in our lives to take a risk, to be like the woman in the gospel who reaches out to Jesus for healing for herself, or to prevent, present ourselves before Jesus with whatever afflicts us, or to be the father who risks the scorn of others to bring Jesus to his dying daughter. Let's ponder a moment in the places in our lives where we may resist turning to God for healing and change. Gracious God, when we resist our call, your call to open our hearts, to allow the freshness of your grace to enter, God have mercy. When we fail to return to you in thanks after experiencing your gift of forgiveness and healing, God have mercy. When we close our eyes to your new and unexpected possibilities of healing and reconciliation, Christ have mercy. When we let fear overwhelm us, and we cling to the security of what we know instead of risking new steps toward your freedom and justice. God have mercy. We don't know what it is in each of our lives that might be affecting us, but we know that God of grace and mercy can lead us. We know God's mercies are fresh every morning. In Christ, God offers the miracle of forgiving grace showering us with his overwhelming protection, and he welcomes us into a community of trust, abundance, and hope. Friends, by grace, our sins are forgiven. As we sing, let us give thanks for the mercy of God, never forgetting that God is always enough. Always enough. I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy To make you proud I'll never be more loved Than I am right now Going through a storm But I won't go down I hear your voice Carried in the rhythm of the winter cold 
across an ocean so I wouldn't drown you've never been closer than you are right now let's lift him up sing Chira Chira you are enough Chira you are enough and I will be content Every circumstance, Jaira, you are enough. Forever enough, always enough. You're more than enough. Forever enough, always enough. You're more than enough. I don't want to forget how I feel right now. On the mountain top, I can see so clear what it's all about. Let's pray. Stay by my side till the sun goes down. Don't wanna forget how I feel right now. So lift it up, sing Jira. Jira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough, forever enough, always enough, you're more than enough, forever enough, always enough, you're more than enough. I'm already loved, I'm already chosen. you spoken I'm already loved more than I could imagine and that is enough let's sing that I'm already loved I'm already chosen I know who I am I know what you spoken Voices, let's sing. That is enough. That is enough. You, let's sing. You are enough. You are enough. Lift it up. You, you are enough. So I am enough. Sing it out. You are enough. So I am enough. Sing, Jara. Sing to him. Sir 
people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Almighty God, we are reminded by stories of miraculous healing that you are a God who's concerned for our whole being, heart, soul, mind, and body. Thank you for your gift of for forgiveness and confession. That as your word tells us, if we confess our sins to one another, we may be healed. Lord, there are many ways we are all in need of healing today, personally, corporately, in our homes and in our nation. You see it all, and you are merciful to forgive and heal. Forgive us for any and all sin that has diminished our witness to your gospel, and pour out your fresh mercy upon us so that we may be healed and strengthened to do your will. Gracious Lord, we know that this land, this nation is in need of healing. With each passing day, it becomes painfully more clear how we have strayed from you and we're reaping a harvest of godlessness in our society. Yet for the sake of those few who would dare to stand against the current of our culture, who would take a stand for you, have mercy on us. Do not destroy us as you did Sodom and Gomorrah. Turn our leaders' hearts toward repentance, that they may speak and act according to your will, not their own agenda. Help all of us to treat our neighbors with respect, kindness, and justice, so that we may live in peace with you and one another. Heavenly Father, you have promised to prepare a place in your kingdom for each one of us who believes in your Son. We cannot describe the peace and assurance that gives us as we await our heavenly home. Still, while we remain here, we have work to do, among which is to love our neighbors. Help us to be earthly ambassadors of your heavenly reality and our eternal destination. Comfort those who grieve the loss of, of loved ones as they have entered their eternal home. We lift up especially the family of William Sharp, whom you called home this past week. Comfort Manu and the rest of William's family. Remind them of that grand reunion that awaits all who trust in you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your sacraments, of baptism and communion, for the gift of forgiveness and sustaining us. Lord, sustain us and heal us. We thank you especially for those first holy communicants who will come forward this day to receive communion for the first time corporately together. Lord, remind us all and help us not to take your grace for, for granted. Merciful healer, you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Before we even speak the words, you are close by to comfort us. We pray for your healing presence to be with all those in, in distress. We lift up especially Vernon Lutz, Dean and Sophia de Camara. We pray for Valerie Kramer and Rick Sharnas, for Cass and Marlene Jensen, Betty Manthe. We lift up Brandon Whistle, Norm and Sandra Bartlett and Pam Morkowski, for Christy Cooper and Ida Mar and Marty Carlin. We lift up Dennis Veerling and Barry Jester, Kathy Ruhr and Jim Cook, Del Birch and Linda Schmidt. We pray for Ina and Bill Bangledorf, Linda Krebs, Jim and Arlene Perkins, for Merritt and Judy McCauley, for Lynn Arsenal and Paige Tate, and all those whose names we now mention either silently or out loud before you. Into your hands, merciful healer, we pray for all, we commend to all whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our healer. Amen. We're definitely experiencing God in this place as we got to 
celebrate with Riley and the baptism, and now we get to celebrate First Communion. So uh, what this is, is these young people have, have an opportunity to kind of come and learn a little bit more about how God welcomes them to the table as God welcomes us all to the table. And so for Selena and Brooklyn and Olivia and Elisha, Emma, Nathan, Alexis, and Chase, this is their first opportunity uh, to be a part of the table that you are all also a part of. Uh, we believe that Christ is present in this meal. And so I know there are some visitors or folks that are, that are here that are celebrating, whether it be baptism or first communion. Um, just know that we celebrate what's called open communion. If you believe Jesus Christ is present with us here in the bread and the wine, you are encouraged and welcome to come forward and receive this gift of forgiveness as these little ones have now uh, said that they are going to do. So um, we pray for them that they'll come, continue to come forward and see God acting in their life uh, as we know he has been all along. But we do this together by hearing words that God has given us, that Jesus has given us, commands that he has told us to do. And this is one of the, the words of institution that go along with the bread and the wine that really make it a sacrament for us. And we hear those words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink. And he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray the prayer of remembrance that our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, the feast is ready. Please come and eat. I invite you to be seated. Those who are helping, please come forward. Hey folks, this is the time of Pentecost. And so during this season in the church, we celebrate the active movement of the Holy Spirit. We look for that spirit to renew us as we hear stories of how uh, that spirit moved through Jesus and the disciples and the people of God. Well, we too are those people of God. And because we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also anticipate the spirit of God moving in our life and in the life of Trinity as we are unleashed into our communities with the news of our resurrected King. And we're excited that you're a part of our worship community here at Trinity. Right now, we're getting things set up for our Paschal Feast. It's that communion meal that Jesus Christ has invited us to share together as we remember his sacrifice for us. If you've picked up your elements of bread and wine, this is a time that you can share the body and blood of Jesus Christ with your family, your friends, your loved ones. If you do not have those elements and would like to receive them at home, please stop by the office from 9 to 3 throughout the week or email me at jjackson at trinityjapa.org. We'll arrange a time to get them to you or to have you pick them up. Uh, if you'd also do us a favor, fill out your connection form right here on the website. It'd be awesome. Uh, we have so many great summer events coming up. We want you to be a part of them all. So please be sure that we have your email address, your phone number, so that we can add you to any of the communication lists that go out throughout the week. Uh, we'd also encourage you to lift up any prayer requests or needs that you might have. Uh, put those on that connection card as well. It's a great way for us to be in community with one another. And finally, we give thanks for the financial gifts that God continues to provide for us through your generous giving. Y'all, God is faithful. So are you. We know that it's been hard for some, and we will continue to pray for your recovery. Let us know if there's any way we can help. Yet we're also so very blessed to be able to use those gifts that you have provided, and we'd ask that you continue to trust us to be great stewards of your monetary giving so that God's glory can be shown through all of our ministries. Folks, a lot of us still feel disconnected. If you do, please reach out to us at any time. But just know there's also nothing like worshiping together as one body in Christ. So if you feel comfortable, please come join us in person. But if you're still cautious, we honor that as well. There's still room for all as we live into the resurrection life that Jesus Christ gives us. And so our prayer for you is that you'll move forward in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're honored that you are taking it with us here at Trinity. God loves you, and so do I.
and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us all and keep us forever in his grace to everlasting life. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us this day. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord always look upon us with his favor and give us his peace. Amen.
as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. Nothing, as we just sang, nothing can stand against the power of our God. If you do, say amen. 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 And just like Pastor Jay said, with God there are no coincidences. So whatever battle you are facing today, know that you have a God who is for you, not against you. He is the almighty fortress that goes before us in every and all circumstances, and that he is greater than anything that is in the world, so he is greater who is in you. And so one of the things that caught my attention that Pastor Jay said was, uh, you know, our bodies are naturally just designed to heal themselves. And I don't believe that's a coincidence either, that even everything that is made speaks to the glory of God. So how much more should we use our mouths, our breath to declare his glory as we go in peace and we serve the Lord? <laughs> 